I drove an hour just to come make some ice cream cakes at Dairy Queen. Well, they're not technically ice cream cakes, but before I get into all that, I have a little fun game we're going to play. There's something hidden in this video, and you won't know what it is until you get to the end, but I want to see if you can find it. You're probably asking, what do I mean there's no such thing as ice cream cakes at Dairy Queen? And that's because Dairy Queen cakes don't have ice cream in them, and they don't have cake in them. You can fact check this on Dairy Queen's very own website if you go to their FAQ section. The Food and Drug Administration sets up what the guidelines are of what gets to be called ice cream. And for it to be considered ice cream, it must have at least 10% fat, and Dairy Queen's soft serve only has five. Which means this is not technically an ice cream cake. But they're still called cakes, which I find pretty funny, because there's no cake inside. The only thing inside of this is a cookie crumb and fudge center. These are just funny, weird, nerdy thoughts that I have as somebody that works with ice cream. At the end of the day, we'd all still call this ice cream and we'd all still call it ice cream cake i hope you learned something new today now let's decorate these cakes for this one i figured i'd go all out with the ice cream theme so we're taking an ice cream cone and we're going to cut this in half and then lay it on top we only need half so it's kind of 2d but it's also a little bit 3d once our cone's laying down we're going to go ahead and fill it up with some frosting and pretend the frosting is some soft serve my white fluffy frosting had a ton of air bubbles in it but we're going to try our best and we're going to try to do that dairy queen signature curl then we're going to add a little blob border on the top and the bottom to match the ice cream cone aesthetic since this is looking a little bland and it's all just pretty white we're gonna add some nice sprinkles to it never underestimate the power of sprinkles to elevate your cake decorating design it's something so simple but it makes a huge difference every time if you're a beginner cake decorator and you want to get some experience i would 100 percent recommend trying to get a job at a dairy queen because some of their designs can be so simple that it's just a border on the top and the bottom and that's a great place to start if you're a beginner and as you can see with this plastic happy birthday you don't even need to know how to write on a cake but that doesn't mean that all cake decorators at dairy queen are beginners because miranda is the one that I'm working with today and she is extremely talented. Miranda's been working with ice cream almost as long as I have, but she is a way better cake decorator than I am. I'm terrible when it comes to making roses because I've never really had a reason to practice them, so I always just said rosettes instead. But Miranda's gonna be a great friend and teach us how to make roses today. First, we're gonna make a green shell border on the top and the bottom. We just used a 21 tips, really simple. Now Miranda's gonna teach us how to make a rose. Tip with the point upside up, make a blob, and spin it around. So it like overlaps, that's your center. Three arches, kind of overlapping. And then five. And then you kind of like flare it out a little bit more too. And then seven. Yeah, she definitely made that look way easier than it's gonna be, but we're gonna try it. But before it's our turn, we have to learn how to take it off the nail, and so we can go ahead and put it on the cake. We're gonna use these special scissors and lift underneath the rose and then lay it down. All right, now it's our turn. So we're gonna start off with making that little blob, like she said. Once we have our blob, we're gonna rotate the nail around so we can wrap that blob up with our first petal. It's been a long time since we did this, so it's, it's gonna be a little rough. So let's go ahead and just restart, because that one looks terrible now that we've restarted we're gonna take our nail we're gonna make a nice little blob again and we're gonna begin to wrap that up with our first petal you want it to kind of look like a volcano when you're done after your first petal you're gonna grow in odd numbers so you go three petals and then we're gonna go five petals and then seven petals but we weren't paying attention so we lost count and we don't really know what numbers are on but it's all good. It should still look like a rose in the end, just not a perfect one. See, this isn't too bad for our first one. It's been a while, but we're going to practice and we have a couple more we get to make. But the tricky part is always the dismount. So let's see how well we can get this onto the cake. We're going to grab our scissors. And we're going to try to tuck those right underneath without messing it up too much. And now we're going to try to slide this off without messing it up too much. Okay, wow. Our dismount was way better than us trying to make the actual rose. Let's just hope this next one is better all around. All right, first step, we make our blob. Now we're going to wrap that blob up with our first petal then we're gonna go three petals five petals seven petals let's try to make sure we actually keep count this time oops we accidentally just pushed it over for some reason we keep knocking them over so then they're being lopsided but hey it still looks fine you put on the cake we definitely lost count again and i don't know why i have such a hard time with this but it's okay it still looks like a rose kind of but here's the final test let's see if we can get the dismount we need the scissors from miranda first and then we're going to shove them right up underneath the rose but also still on the nail and then lift up and then we're going to lay that on top of the cake we got to try to pull away without pulling the rose with us and as you can see miranda is a pro and in the time it took us to make a few roses she already made a half a dozen one of my favorite things about making cakes is that we get to hide all of our mistakes so no one will know that they're there with flowers that normally means adding lots and lots of leaves and making these leaves is so sad and so fun to me to make leaves like these we're gonna allow some pressure to come out 
and then we're going to release the pressure and keep going back and forth like this it's kind of weird the first few times you do it but after you get the pressure part down it's super easy and very satisfying to do and what's really nice about them is you can't really overdo it so if you're just having fun making them just keep going until you get bored the easier way to make leaves is by doing this but you just squeeze it and then pull away and you don't have to make any little ripples in the leaf for the sake of fun and to add a little bit of balance we're just going to add a few more leaves to the bottom we're going to go ahead and do three because supposedly odd numbers look better in art speaking of art there's something fun that's been hidden in this video and i hope you've been looking for it because at the end i'll tell you what it is so we have all of our leaves and we have all our flowers on our cake what else can we add let's go ahead and add some vines the first step is we need to unscrew the coupler and then take the tip off and we're going to go ahead and grab this writing tip and then screw the coupler back on with the writing tip with the vines there's a ton of techniques to it you can just go very loose and just kind of little curls or you can go extremely tight curls you can honestly just do whatever you want for this one i'm going to go kind of loose if it breaks at all while you're piping it down that's just an air bubble it happens all the time you just go back and fix it the vines can get kind of awkward so try not to think too much and just let them come out and be organic if you focus too much on making them look perfect they won't look natural they'll just look funny i think three is probably the perfect number so this should be our last little vine but now that i'm looking at it i think it makes way more sense to add a couple vines down here on the bottom so we'll just add two little vines peeking out remember a few minutes ago when i said there can never be too many leaves well i think our vines need a few more leaves so we're going to add some leaves to our vines so we're going to switch our tips back you're going to unscrew that coupler and then switch the tip and then screw it back on you don't want our vines to turn into bushes so don't put too many leaves on them but you can just have fun with it don't be too critical but i normally try to cover up the point where i started the vine then go ahead and just find points on the vine that you think would look nice with a leaf on it and like this one, I'm going to cover up my mistake, which was that air bubble earlier. This is our first rose cake in a long time. And I think it turned out pretty good. But let's go check out Miranda. She's the expert. Let's see what she did with hers. Of course, it's amazing as always. And if you watch the whole thing and didn't find the toilet, I'm going to go ahead and make this a loop. So hopefully you find it the next time you watch it. Also, Miranda is so talented that 